Hello, my lovelies. Today is a very humid day. We just had rain. We just had rain yesterday. Now, it's dried up a little bit and I can do a little bit of work in the garden. So I'm just now surveying the damage. Anyway, not the damage. It is actually a damage because when it rains, of course, I can't work in the garden. And also, the rain as well is not that heavy. So a lot of the plants that I sort of like this one, I put it out here in my calamansi tree to hang it up like this so it gets watered by the rain. But there's not enough rain. So what happens? It dries up. And that is a problem with a lot of the rain. Before, when we had drought, I watered more or I watered my succulents more but this last couple of years, a lot of the plants that requires a lot of watering doesn't get watered at all. And what happens is, of course, they suffer and die. My poor garden here, I haven't even ventured in there for like a year almost. And I just want to show you this one. This is just, look at this beautiful, gorgeous Nisea. So I'm trying to, and it's flowering. Okay, I'm going to flick the camera over. Portulacaria olerosea. How gorgeous is this? Normally, this is much more pinkier or the color is more intense during summer when we hardly have any rain. But because we've had so much rain and I can see a lot of the leaves are drying as well because it rains and then it doesn't rain enough and so a lot of them still stays dry so this one i can feel that it had a little bit of a drink only a little bit so it needs more watering but now this is actually the first time i've seen it flower i can't remember if last year it flowered for me but anyway this year oh yeah i think it did but anyway that's a memory a long time ago, <laughs> but for now, isn't it beautiful? Okay, I, I actually have to do it. Oh, it's beautiful, that flower. But sadly, this is not frost hardy, and this actually died ready. So I had a few thick plants, and I've already given away so many. But all I have left last year, because I brought it inside, is a little bit of a stem like this. And then now I revive it again. So this year, I'm going to bring it again inside during winter to winter over. And next springtime, I'm going to bring it out again. So the process starts all over again. A couple of weeks ago, I went to my local hardware store to buy something and I found this. I had been after a Barbadensis Miller. I have seen a couple online for sale, but I am not too sure. I'm not confident that this actually Barbadensis because people can mislabel things and it's going to get me into a lot of trouble. But I have a friend who actually, apparently, Baba Dances has got yellow flowers. So she sent me a photo of her Baba Dances and it kind of looks like this plant here. So I have an aloe vera. So this is, okay, I'll put these three together here. So I have a one aloe vera. A two aloe vera chinensis. At least they put chinensis in it. And then this one is just aloe hybrid or something. Look, it just says aloe, nothing. Uh, replicota <laughs> assorted succulents. It was $23. And I am desperate for a Barbadensis Miller. So hopefully this is one of them. So anyway, this one now has suffered the frost, the cold doesn't like. This is not frost hardy. And I think this one is also <laughs> not frost hardy, but at least it looks a little bit better than this aloe vera here. So this one as well, I had them growing before in my, I have a glass house a long, long time ago. And I've kept it alive for a few years inside the glass house. And I've just been harvesting it every time you got cuts or burns or mosquito bite i used to just break off a leaf from this aloe vera and rub it against the infected area and it's all good maybe it's psychological maybe it actually works so i don't know 
This is my Ashivriya Gavodi Sirius and it is seriously looking beautiful. I actually went inside to get my puffer because, look, this actually all came from this plant. Ah, mosquito bit me again. Now, anyway, <laughs> I already sprayed, but they just love me. Now, my chia hasn't worked. I have another week. Now, this one, you can see the rust that's flake off from my shelf that's rusting away so that I have to amend that I have to change that but this one is gorgeous this Agavoidi Sirius look at that beautiful beautiful color oh my goodness so it probably had too much water but anyway it's still beautiful look at that so now this one now look you can see it's just drenched so I need to drain this and put it up high give it some little legs where so anyway, you know what I mean like that. So that way it can breathe. It's got a big hole, but I need to put it somewhere like a shelf or something. So maybe take it. Where are we going to take you? Should I put you back there, that rusty thing? Horrible, horrible shelf. Okay, I'll put you back here. Because See, look at that. That's all lifting up. And don't buy this, guys. I'm telling you, you're going to regret it. So I got this one from the Rejects shop here in Australia <laughs> if you're in Australia don't get the reject shop shelf you, it's it's a reject it's rubbish okay I'm sorry but it's just rubbish my gold dust this is my third Semper Vivum gold dust now can you see a baby yes I can see one baby two baby so there's another one coming out I don't know if there's more on the other side and I paid $45 for this $45 but a couple of years ago I bought one for $35 and I kid you not that small one there I paid $35 for something that size you know the tiny one there it's just terrible and of course it grew and it sort of grew to about <laughs> this size and then I changed my soil because I was experimenting with a new soil mix and then I thought I changed it a few weeks ago which I forgot again that it's summer don't touch your Zemper Vivum during summer they're gonna die they're asleep so if you touch them they'll die and actually there's two of them that died the $35 one and also a $50 one which was given to me by someone very special Thank you, Kanya. I'm sorry, your Semper Vivum gold dust that was covered with millibug before died as well. Well, it got over the millibug, but it did not get over me changing the soil. So anyway, I'll put you there now. And now it's going to stay there where I'm not going to change the soil as well. I'll leave it for a while to get used to its environment. Because they also, plants need some adjustment as well. You can't just take a plant from somewhere and think that it's going to do okay. So plants need some adjustment as well. You can't just take a plant and say, okay, I'm going to get you from the shop and I'm going to transplant you. And I <laughs> just fashion myself a new selfie pole here. Oh, there's, what is that? Is that a bee or... Uh, hornet anyway so a lot of the plants are suffering edema at the moment or water retention in the next few days this is I've got all these plants and every every time I say I'm gonna do this and you know set a time for it but it just oh look got a few hornets flying around okay so don't bite me now anyway oh okay palmary Sedum palmary. Once upon a time, I bought one palmary. <laughs> one. And this is now four, five years later. <laughs> this is what it looks like. On the first year, it just looked like this. Okay. And on the second year, oh my goodness, it had formed three rosettes. And the color, see the tip there? It's like that, only the whole plant just went like red. And beautiful so from that one plant look you can still see the original plant so this is that came from okay you can see that the center there so I had one so this is my original plant I think maybe that's the closest to there is that a offshoot already that's an offshoot so this one had one plant there maybe that's the original plant I don't know and now it sort of formed like this and what I did is I just stuck it in the soil so now actually I can cut this one and then this is the one now that sort of now grew and rooted during summer the, you can 
be disappointed or I was disappointed because it didn't really do anything except the second year it went all red and the third and the fourth year nothing and so I put it up the top and this is now probably the fifth year so I've had it for a long time and all I've got is this one and yet okay this one now I should really put this in the garden so they like the cold they don't like the heat of the summer and anyway so I'm just going to show you the other one Evelyn thank you so much Evelyn this is from Evelyn she gave me a cutting of the palmary look at that so this one is only one and I chop 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 and so now it's grown so much so she actually gave this to me a long time ago it's almost a year now I said Evelyn I don't know I can't remember the last time she was here so now this is growing so you can see this is probably a more prolific grower than this one although the rosettes of this one is bigger than that one but anyway beautiful plant I plan to grow a battalion of sedum palmary such a beautiful 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 plant look guys I'm at it again I am T-O-R chewer <laughs> I have to pause because I am putting them or giving them a hard time. I'm torturing my Frank Reynolds again. So this one was in a pot, my pretty pot I call it. Oh, this is not a Frank Reynolds. Oh my goodness. So this is something else. I can't put you there. So now I have to really put this in the garden now. So I have been, so you can see that it rained again and... That's actually, I tip out the water and then, because we had the rain. Oh, I got a pupae. Oh, is that a pupae? No, it's a seed. Oh, I thought it's one of those caterpillar things. Anyway, I just chucked this in here. This is from a Hawarthia. I need to put this in the garden. But anyway, you can see that if you don't give them enough water, they will rot. If you give them a lot of water, they love it. And they gorge themselves and fatten up, take up what they can and doesn't take up what they can't and I can see some mosquito larvae swimming around in my soil here so this one needs to go in the garden so hubby is I've already fed him so it sounds like a dog in it I fed him and he's got his water <laughs> and so now so I can work in the garden for uh, an hour <laughs> I have increments of an hour to do what Ever I have to do and sometimes and this one needs to be watered but what I'm gonna do with this what are you uh, sedum or sedum makinoi makinoi varigara I'm gonna let you enjoy the mosquito over here there you go and take it up now oh chroma chroma I am so disappointed with chroma still not coloring up for me so I don't know this is still the original soil she says succulent that this is my chroma 2 my chroma 1 is i don't know where it's doing its monochromatic thing so i have to put this here because that's going to go in the garden and they're not as frost hardy as i would like them to be so i have to put it somewhere where it's a little bit protected or i have to create some protection for it variegated prolific up the top see what it's doing ah Oh my goodness, oh how beautiful are you. All these prolifica, these are all grown from a leaf. A leaf, a leaf, a leaf, a leaf, a leaf, leaf, leaf. Now, beautiful, look at you, gorgeous, gorgeous. So it's very prolific. I was going to plant some prolifica in the garden, but now I decided... I'm going to plant some variegated prolifica in my garden because they are just so gorgeous. Look at that. Why have a plain one when you can have a high maintenance one? <laughs> so when I say high maintenance, just reminds me of hubby when he met me. He asked me, are you high maintenance? And then I said to him, what do you mean high maintenance? Are you one of those women who can't? entertain themselves and then as it turned out who's the high maintenance now <laughs> but i love maintaining him okay it's just gorgeous i am just transfixed with this one i love this one 
so and then you can see the normal one. Oh, look that's a nice big one here so that's a normal prolifica and then variegated prolifica the yellow ones can't survive on their own so if it's part yellow and part sort of a greenish thing then that's fine but on their own don't buy prolifica or variegated plant for that matter that's just have that all yellow all yellow like that you remove that it's just gonna die see even there you can see all the yellow it's so cute but oh my goodness it's so so dang cute I love it oh what are you this is something else growing here there's another plant I think that is a I can't remember now anyway <laughs> Haworthiopsis this is now wash uh, washboard fairy or fairy washboard or something like that this one now okay so Haworthiopsis grows uh, well they flower okay you can see that it's flowering and then they start forming so this is still the flower or the bloom see this one's still blooming this is a different one next to it but the same they're Haworthiopsis and what happens when they flower they throw off a baby a pup so like this and I am not gonna remove that until they actually form roots aerial roots so you can take that off and stick that in but I like to leave it until so that's from that mummy plant there so I like to leave it until it dries up this whole stem here dries up then that is the time for me to oh well it's an indication that it's time to be planted in the soil so you can actually just sort of put it like that but it's gonna break so that's why I like to leave it until it dries up and behind me is my Habworthia attenuata variegata this will grow I mean this will go all see the stripes yellow and different colors if it's exposed to the sun or oh, just just remind me I have to remove you today really I have to remove you desperately that's a Romeo or an ebony that's grown from a seed wildly anyway this one now there's one two three four like stem or bloom stalk so that's the flower stalk and you have one ateno what the two Atenowata and three Atenowata and it's also variegated see this one now I can actually plant this because look it's dried up and even this one you can see from the bottom are you a root so I like to plant them when this is actually bigger so this one as well so now I got one two three plants plus a whole lot of plants growing from this one plant as well so which is just amazing so now that's gonna go in the garden because it's very frost hardy now there is one plant here that I love 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 you okay it's crap to very I can't can't sing that or else they're gonna flag my video this is crap to very rubra how beautiful are you? I know I propagated a whole lot of Graptoveria rubra. Maybe that other one earlier was one of them. But this is just from one plant. One plant. And look at it now. So this is probably a year and a half old or less than two years. So I bought one, just one rosette, like that size actually that size there and now look at it look how many now this is also going in the garden because I'm sure this well it is frost hardy and also gonna be beautiful in my garden so anyway guys that's all for this video because I need to work I've got half an hour now to work in the garden maybe I'll just start off by pulling off some weeds and also this afterglow has to join the other afterglow that I've got there so I've got three in the garden now it's gonna be five afterglow thank you so much for watching guys and hope I see you on the next video 